Hi, so uh, this is my uh, fourth uh, tutorial and uh, today we will be uh, solving uh, some problems uh, uh, involving coefficient of determination and also you know model fitting uh, with uh, autocorrelated auto errors. So, uh, here is the first problem. The problem says that your friend says he has uh, fitted a plane to 33 observations on x 1, x 2 and y and his overall regression is just significant at 0 0.05 level of significance. Okay, that means, your friend has fitted uh, a multiple linear regression model with uh, uh, two regressors x 1 and x 2 and uh, one response variable and his uh, test is significant that means, the fitted model is significant at 5 percent level of significance. Now, you asked him for his r square value that is the uh, coefficient of determination, but he does not know. You work out for him on the basis of what he has told you. So, what are the information given to you is that he has fitted a multiple linear regression model with uh, two regressors x 1 and x 2 and uh, his fit is significant at uh, 0 0.05 uh, level, but he does not know, know the r square value where r square is the coefficient of determination and uh, it sort of uh, measure the proportion of variability uh, that is explained by the model. Now, you have to work out this r square value from whatever he has told to you. So, well, uh, <coughs> so what you know is that uh, your friend has fitted a model like this y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon and this model has been fitted uh, for n equal to 33 observations. Okay. So, from this uh, observations, uh, I mean from, from this ob, uh, information, what you can do is that you can uh, construct uh, ANOVA table for this one. So, here is the ANOVA table. Okay. Uh, source sum of square degree of freedom and uh, MS and the F statistic. Okay. So, the total degree of freedom is uh, 32 because there are uh, only 33 observations and then the regression degree of freedom is 2 because there are 3 parameters and the residual degree of freedom is 30. And of course, uh, your friend has you know uh, SS regression. Uh, S S residual and uh, S S total and uh, hence the M S regression, M S residual and A value. Okay, so, what you know is that this F is significant. So, uh, this F follows 
f distribution with the degree of freedom to 30 and his test is just significant. So, that means, the observed f value is just greater than or equal to the f value 0 0.05 at the level of at uh, with degree of freedom to 30 which is equal to 3.32. So, you can assume that the observed f value is uh, close to 3.32 and from here you have to compute the r square value. Okay, what is r square? r square is S s regression by S s total that is the pro proportion of variability in y about mean that is explained by the uh, model. Okay. But what you know is that you know f which is equal to m s regression by m s residual. So, you know the f value, you know their degree of freedom, but of course, you do not know uh, separately the m s regression value and m s residual value from f you have to compute r square. Okay, so, this is the problem. Well, uh, we will see whether this r square can be uh, written in terms of f. So, r square which is equal to s s regression by s s t that I can write as s s regression and s s total is equal to s s regression plus s s residual. right? And uh, this one, I want to express this one in terms of a f. Uh, so, this I can write as s s regression by m s residual. So, I will divide both the numerator and uh, denominator by m s residual. So, this is uh, s s regression by m s residual plus s s residual by m s residual. Okay. So, this one is uh, equal to So, S s regression it can be written as V 1 M s regression by M s residual, right? where V 1 is the uh, regression degree of freedom. right? So, regression degree of freedom is uh, V 1. And similarly, here also I can write that this one as V 1 m s regression by m s residual plus V 2 m s residual by m s residual, where uh, residual has degree of freedom v 2. 
Okay. So, this one is equal to now I can write. So, m s regression by m s residual is nothing but f. So, this can be written as v 1 f by v 1 f plus v 2. Okay. So, now we can compute r square. So, this is how you know we can express r square in terms of uh, f. So, we know that f is uh, close to 3.32 and we know that our, our v 1, v 1 is the regression degree of freedom that is equal to 2 in our case and v 2 which is the uh, residual degree of freedom that is equal to 30. So, r square can be uh, now written as 2 into 3.32 by 2 into 3.32 plus 30. So, which is equal to 0 0.1812. That means, uh, uh, you know what is uh, r square. Uh, r square is the uh, proportion of variability in y about mean that is explained by the model. So, you can see here only uh, 80 percent of total variability has been uh, explained by the model. So, r square is this means only 80 percent of total variability has been uh, explained by the model. So, you can see that from this example, uh, r square is a very uh, good uh, parameter to uh, measure the, uh, to measure how good the fit is. Uh, see the, sig the the test is significant. So, the model is significant according to the global F test, but uh, only 18 percent of the total variability has been explained by the model. So, uh, which is quite low. Okay. So, we will consider another problem of uh, similar type. So, this problem says that you are given a regression pin print out that shows a planar fit to x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 and x 5 plus intercept of course, obtained from a set of 50 observations. The overall f for regression is 10, 10 times as big as the 5 percent upper tail f percentage point. So, you have to compute how big is r square. Well, uh, so here you are considering a model involving 5 regressors. So, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 5 x 5 plus epsilon. Okay. And this model is fitted on 50 observations. So, uh, we can quickly have an ANOVA table uh, just uh, Uh, so, total degree of freedom, just the degree of freedom is important. Total degree of freedom is uh, of course, 49 and regression degree of freedom is there are 1, 2, 3, uh, total 6 parameters. So, the regression degree of freedom is 5 and the residual degree of freedom is then 40, 
4 well so what we know is that we know that my uh, v 1 is equal to 5 here v 2 is equal to 44 and it says that the observed f value is 10 times the tabulated f value. So, for this test here f has degree of freedom f 544 and you have to find the tabulated value for this one at uh, 0 0.05 and you can check that this value is equal to 2.43. Okay. So, what we are given is that your observed f value is 10 times bigger than this one. So, your observed f value is then uh, is equal to 10 times of this tabulated f value that is 2.43. So, which is equal to 24.3. Okay. Uh, and you know v 1, v 2, you know f. So, you can compute r square now. So, problem is that how big is r square. So, you know the formula that r square is equal to r square is equal to v 1 f by v 1 f plus v 2. So, here your v 1 is 5 and f is 24.3. So, 5 into 24.3 plus v 2 is that is the residual degree of freedom that is 44. So, here uh, 7343 that means 73 percent of the total variability uh, in the response variable has been explained by the fitted model okay, which is uh, uh, quite good. Okay, so, next uh, we will be considering one problem uh, from um, regression models uh, with uh, auto correlated errors. Okay. So, here is the problem. Consider the simple linear regression model y t equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x t plus epsilon t, uh, where the errors are generated by second order auto regressive process. Okay, so, I hope that you can recall. So, here you can see this uh, observations are collected sequentially in time. So, they are, these are time series data basically that is why it is denoted by T here. And in case of time series data, we know that uh, this uh, epsilon T, the error term they are not independent, they are basically uh, correlated. And here it is given that the errors are second order, errors are having second order auto regressive uh, relation. So, epsilon t <coughs> is equal to rho 1 epsilon t minus 1 plus rho 2 epsilon t minus 2 plus z t. So, this z t is independent uh, with uh, mean 0 and uh, variance uh, sigma z square. Here rho 1 and rho 2 are called auto correlation parameters. So, the problem is that you know you have to discuss how Cochrane or cut iterative process could be used in this situation. Uh, if you can recall, we we talked about how to uh, fit the regression parameters beta naught and beta 1 
in case of first order autoregressive error. So, here instead of first order autoregressive or, uh, error, uh, we have second order autoregressive uh, error. So, this is quite a straightforward uh, problem. Uh, so, it says that what transformation would be used on the variables uh, y t and x t and how would you estimate the parameters rho 1 and rho 2. Well, so this is the problem. How do you uh, estimate this uh, parameter beta naught and beta 1 hat, beta 1 and beta naught in the presence of second order autoregressive error? Okay. So, let me start uh, the solution for this uh, problem. So, you need to feed this model y t is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x t plus epsilon t, where this epsilon t is equal to rho 1, this is uh, second order autoregressive uh, epsilon t minus 1 plus rho 2 epsilon t minus 2 plus z t and this z t follows normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma z square. So, usually you know uh, when we fit a simple linear regression model we assume that epsilon t follows normal distribution with 0 mean and constant variance and if it and they are also independent. So, if this is true, then we can estimate beta naught and beta 1 using the ordinary least square technique. But here it is given that uh, this error term, they are not independent, they are correlated and, and they follow the second order autoregressive uh, process. Okay. So, in this situation how to fit this model. So, what we do is that uh, we transform this uh, response variable y t to y t dashed which is equal to y t minus rho 1 y t minus 1 minus rho 2 y t minus 2. Okay. So, this is equal to, so this is this is equal to, uh, so uh, y t prime is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x t plus epsilon t minus rho 1 beta naught plus beta 1 x t minus 1 plus epsilon t minus 1 minus rho 2 beta naught plus beta 1 x t minus 2 plus epsilon t minus 2. So, you understood. So, this is my y t, this is rho 1 y t minus 1 and then rho 2 y t minus 2. Right? So, this can be written as uh, beta naught minus rho 1 beta naught minus rho 2 beta naught plus beta 1 x t minus rho 1 x t minus 1 minus rho 2 x t minus 2 plus epsilon t minus rho 1 epsilon t minus 1 minus rho 2 epsilon t minus 2 right epsilon t minus 2. Okay. And this one is equal to 
z t. So, this term is equal to z t. Uh, so, I can uh, rewrite this one as say beta naught dash plus beta 1 call this uh, as x t prime. So, what you do is you transform y t to y t prime and similarly x t to x t prime. So, this is my x t prime uh, plus z t. So, now in this transform model, so we have transformed y t to y t prime where y t prime is given here. Similarly, we, we have transformed x t to x t prime and as a consequence the error term has been transformed to z t. This z t is now independent. Now, z t are independent. Okay. So, uh, and also we know that z t follows z t follows normal 0 sigma z square. So, the advantage of this one is that now, uh, now we have a model like y t prime equal to beta naught dash plus beta 1 x t prime plus z t and here the error term is error terms follow normal distribution with uh, uh, mean 0 and variance uh, sigma square uh, and they are also independent. So, now you, you are in a position to apply uh, your uh, ordinary least square technique to estimate the regression coefficients beta naught prime and beta 1. But the problem is that you know this uh, y t you see here this y t uh, prime that involves row 1 and row 2. Similarly, x t prime uh, involves row 1 and row 2. So, uh, we cannot use this transformation unless we know the value of row 1 and row 2. So, y t prime and x t prime cannot be used directly as y t prime which is equal to y t minus rho 1 y t minus 1 minus rho 2 y t minus 2 and uh, x t prime which is equal to x t minus rho 1 x t minus 1 minus rho 2 x t minus 2 are function of unknown parameters. rho 1 and rho 2. So, unless you know see you are given the data x x t and y t you do not know rho 1 rho 2 unless you do not unless you know the value of rho 1 rho 2 how do you use this transformation right. So, uh, we need to estimate them and we know that these are that uh, autocorrelation parameter what is this rho 1 and rho 2 are. Uh, autocorrelation parameter for this uh, second order autoregressive process rho 1 epsilon t minus 1 plus rho 2 epsilon t minus 2 plus z t. So, we need to estimate this rho 1 and rho 2. So, how to do that? Uh, you know that the E t, the observed value of E t epsilon t are T th residual E t. Okay. Uh, so, what we do is that uh, we fit this model y t equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x t plus epsilon t using ordinary least square technique and uh, obtain 
the residual E i. So, we will feed this model, uh, we do not uh, I mean, ignoring the fact that they are uh, autocorrelated. Uh, so, you feed this model and once you have the fitted model, you can compute the residuals and then you regress E i on E i minus 1 and E i minus 2. That is, uh, you fit a model like E i is equal to rho 1 E i minus 1 plus rho 2 E i minus 2 plus some error z t. So, you know epsilon i's, uh, so you can fit this model, right. So, this is nothing but uh, multiple linear regression model with two regressors. So, how do you estimate the parameter rho 1 and rho 2? You uh, compute the least square function s rho 1 rho 2, which is equal to uh, E i minus rho 1 E i minus 1 minus rho 2 E i minus 2 and you minimize this. So, you estimate rho 1 and rho 2 in such a way that uh, this least square function is minimized and what you do is that you just differentiate this s with respect to rho 1 that equal to 0 will give you one normal equation and similarly partial derivative of s with respect to rho 2 is equal to 0 this will give you another normal equations. Let me write down those things. So, E i minus rho 1 E i minus 1 rho 2 E i minus 2 into E i minus 1 this is equal to 0. This is the first normal equation and the second normal equation is E i minus rho 1 E i minus 1 minus rho 2 E i minus 2 into E i minus 2 equal to 0. So, you have two normal equations and two unknown. So, you can uh, estimate, you can find rho 1 and rho 2, and call them rho 1 hat and rho 2 hat. These are the least square estimate of rho 1 and rho 2. Okay. So, once you have this uh, estimated uh, values, uh, now you can uh, use this rho 1 hat and rho 2 hat uh, to get the transform values y t prime is equal to y t minus rho 1 hat y t minus 1 minus rho 2 hat y t minus 2 and similarly you get x t prime which is equal to x t minus rho 1 hat x t minus 1 minus rho 2 hat x t minus 2. So, now you can obtain y t prime and x t prime. So, these are the transform data and now you are in position to apply ordinary least square to the transform data y t prime equal to beta naught prime plus beta 1 x t prime plus z t. And here for the transform data you know this z t the error term on transform data this follows normal 0 sigma z square. So, normal uh, with uh, mean 0 and constant variance sigma z square and they are independent. So, so you are in position to apply ordinary least square technique and uh, you apply ordin ordinary least square technique here to get uh, the estimated value and the final 
fitted observ fitted model is y t prime hat is equal to beta naught prime hat plus beta 1 hat x t. Okay. So, this is how we can uh, fit uh, the model uh, in the presence of uh, uh, second order autoregressive error. Okay. So, this is called uh, Cochrane or cut uh, procedure and uh, in a module called uh, regression models with uh, auto correlated errors, we talked about the same technique uh, for auto uh, for auto regressive errors uh, with uh, I mean first order auto regressive order. Okay. We, we solve the same problem uh, when uh, there exist a first order auto regressive error and uh, just now we solved uh, for second order auto regressive order uh, auto regressive error. Okay. So, let me consider one more problem. Um, this is also you know um, to check whether there exist a lag one autocorrelation or serial correlation. Uh, it says that the following 24 residuals, so these are the residuals from a straight line fit are equally spaced in time and are given in time sequential order. That means, this uh, residuals are obtained from a time series data and uh, they are equally spaced, I mean the times are uh, equally spaced. So, the question is, is there any evidence of lag 1 serial correlation? for this 24 residuals. So, it says that you uh, use a two sided test at level alpha equal to 0 0.05. Okay. So, you are given E i for i equal to 1 to 24 okay. and how do you test that there exist or, uh, lag 1 serial correlation or not. Uh, we know that uh, uh, for testing lag 1 serial correlation, we need to go for Darwin Watson test. So, what we will do is that, so uh, what is lag 1 uh, correlation is that the correlation between epsilon u and epsilon u plus 1, this correlation is equal to rho, which is not equal to 0 if there exist lag 1 uh, autocorrelation. So, what you have to test is that, so here you can see the errors are one step apart. So, we need to test that h naught rho equal to 0 against the h 1 that uh, rho is not equal to 0. So, h naught says that there is no lag 1 autocorrelation in the residuals, h naught says that and H 1 says uh, there exist lag 1 autocorrelation. So, what we do is that we compute Durbin Watson test statistic. Uh, what is that? That is d equal to sum over E u minus E u minus 1 square u is from 2 to 24 here by E u square for u equal to 1 to 24 and that you can check that you are given E i is right, you are given E u for u equal to 1 to 24. So, we can compute this one, this is 2 to 2 5 by 8 34, which is equal to 2.67. Well, so my d is 2.67, and we know that this d is uh, d. The range of d is from 0 to 4, and it is symmetric about 
2 we compute 4 minus d also 4 minus d is equal to 1.33. And what you do is that uh, for testing this uh, two sided alternative uh, we compare this d value compare with d l and d u and this value you will get from the d table. Uh, so, for alpha equal to 0 0.025 because, because it is two, two sided test that is why I am taking for alpha equal to 0 0.025 n equal to 24 and k equal to 1 because it is a straight line fit. Uh, so, there is only one regressor in the model that is why k is equal to 1. Uh, you can check that your d l and d u is equal to 1.16 and 1.33. Okay. Now, we need to think about the critical uh, values for this one. Okay, so, what we have is that we have uh, we know that my d is equal to 2.67, my 4 minus d is equal to 1.33 and my d l and d u is equal to uh, 1.16. 1.33. Okay. So, if D is less than D L or 4 minus D is less than D L you reject H naught. That means, if the Darwin Watson test statistic is small, then you reject H naught. Rejecting H naught means uh, there is no autocorrelation. Okay. Uh, Let us see what is this d value, d is uh, 2.67 which is not equal to d l and uh, similarly 4 minus d which is equal to 1.33 which is not strictly oh, sorry which is again not less than d l value which is 1.66. So, here d value is uh, large. So, we reject uh, H naught. Rejecting H naught means uh, well, so d is not true. Okay. So, this is not true. So, we are not going to reject H naught. We accept, accept H naught because uh, as uh, my d which is equal to 2.67 which is not equal to d l which is not less than equal to 1.16. So, this is not true. So, I will accept h naught. So, accepting h naught means uh, uh, no there is there is no lag one autocorrelation or uh, serial correlation okay so this is the first one and also you can do what you can do is that you check with this one uh, if of course, you will get the same result if d is greater than 
d u and uh, 4 minus d is uh, greater than d u, then it says that you accept h naught, which is equal to rho is equal to 0. Uh, is it, so this is the test in terms of uh, d u values, d upper values. So, d is greater than d u, yes, d is 2.67, which is greater than d u 1.33 and also uh, my 4 minus d, which is uh, equal to 1.33 is greater than or equal to d u that is uh, 1.33. So, uh, both are true. Uh, so, we ac accept H naught, uh, accepting H naught means uh, there is uh, uh, there is no there is no lag 1 uh, autocorrelation. Or, uh, or serial correlation uh, in the in the data. Okay, so uh, here uh, uh, we have. Uh, used uh, uh, Darwin Watson test to test uh, whether there exist uh, you know uh, serial autocorrelation lag 1 autocorrelation or not. Uh, so, intuitively you know when the d value uh, um, that is the Darwin Watson test stat statistic whether when that is small that means, uh, there exist autocorrelation, right? Uh, and here you can see that the, uh, the d value is not small smaller than the d lower value. Uh, that is why finally, the conclusion is that uh, th there is no lag 1 autocorrelation in the in the data. Okay. Well, so we talked about uh, this problem, and uh, uh, still we have you know some time, so uh, we can sort of uh, recall the parameter estimation technique in case of uh, in the existence of first order autoregressive errors. So this is what the uh, Cochrane or could uh, method you know uh, and uh, this says that you know how to uh, estimate this uh, parameter beta naught and beta 1 uh, when there exist uh, first order autocorrelation or uh, among the uh, errors. Well, uh, and uh, this epsilon t, they are not independent, zero sigma square. Uh, they are uh, having the first, first order autoregressive um, error. And what we did there is that uh, we transform uh, y t to y t prime, uh, which is equal to y t minus rho y t minus 1 and uh, and we can finally, check uh, you can finally, check that this y t prime is equal to beta naught prime plus beta 1 x t prime plus uh, uh, z t 
and here z t is equal to epsilon t minus rho epsilon t minus 1 and we know that this z t this transform error they are independent and uh, that is why you know you can uh, use uh, ordinary least square technique uh, to this transformed data, but the problem again is that you know uh, the, the, this x t prime and y t prime they involve some unknown parameter rho and uh, we talked about how to estimate uh, those uh, rho. Uh, I mean the similar technique. I mean just you know, repeating the things here. Uh, so you feed the model using the ordinary least square technique. Uh, forget, ignore the um, thing that you know, assumption is not true here. And uh, fitting the ordinary least square technique, you will get the residuals EIs, and then you regress EI on EI minus one, right? And you feed this uh, model that is E i is equal to rho E i minus 1 plus z t and the least square estimate of rho is this one. Uh, you can check that you know you have to uh, uh, estimate rho in such a way that this is uh, uh, this is minimum. So, the rho value is equal to this and uh, using this row now you can transform the data y t to y t prime similarly x t to x t prime and now you know that this transform data or the transform model uh, has error z t which is normal 0 sigma square and they are independent. So, you can apply uh, ordinary least square technique to this transform data and you can happily you know estimate beta naught hat and uh, beta 1 hat. Okay. So, this is sort of just uh, you know uh, we solve the same problem for um, second order autoregressive error today. Well, so um, that is all for today. Again, in the next tutorial class, we will be solving uh, some randomly selected problems. Thank you very much.